in 2008, we set out on an adventure to the Middle East. When we left Pittsburgh to move to Dubai, we knew that we were about to live in one of the least sustainable cities in the world, with an economy supported in large part by fossil fuels. We wanted to offer something that could help shift that paradigm. So we sat down one evening in front of Ski Dubai at the Mall of the Emirates and brainstormed a project that merged our skills and interests. We were inspired by the landscape of the Arabian Peninsula and by the plentitude of natural energy resources there, most significantly the sun. We were also inspired by the genre of land art, which often incorporates the natural environment with the built. We saw the idea of the fusion of art and energy as tackling a number of problems all at once. We were working towards the construction of a new type of public art, large and site-specific, informed by both the traditions of land art and infrastructure art. These public artworks will be utility scale, grid-connected, renewable energy power plants. We believe that interdisciplinary collaborations can lead to innovation, and we think that art has an important role to play, especially in helping to address the aesthetic pushback that we've seen with some renewable energy installations. We want to help expand the notion of sustainability to include not just resources and the environment, but also human social harmony. While power plants like these on the screen do not pollute the air by burning fossil fuels, some people may consider them less than aesthetically pleasing or even a form of visual pollution. And as these more sustainable solutions make their way closer and closer to the places where we live and work, a renewable energy nimbyism, not in my backyard, has become more and more vocal. We think that public art can be a great tool for cities with which to integrate renewable energy, energy systems into the built environment while addressing such public concerns. Public art serves many purposes. It teaches, inspires, adds pleasure and interest to our days. It generates tourism and increased economic development. Can public art do all of these things and more? Many traditional works of land art use only natural materials, but there are other great examples that incorporate synthetic materials into the works. So why not use emerging renewable energy technologies as a medium for the art? We thought that an international design competition would be the best way to get global participation in this idea. So we first came up with a few concepts of our own to demonstrate what we were talking about, and then we launched the first land art generator initiative competition for Abu Dhabi and Dubai. The design brief was simple. The artwork was to capture energy from nature, cleanly convert it into electricity, and transform and transmit the electrical power to a grid connection point to be supplied by the city. Consideration should be made for the safety of the viewing public and for the educational activities that will occur on site. We gave artists the choice between three very large urban sites, two in Abu Dhabi and one in Dubai. We chose sites that would inspire the minds of the design teams as well as the residents, local stakeholders, and decision makers of both cities. The outcome of the 2010 design competition exemplifies how interdisciplinary teams can come together to create truly innovative and pragmatic solutions. And talk about Santa. This, it was like Christmas morning when these came in. Um, hundreds of submissions from over 40 countries came in from design teams, um, including top international design firms and artists. The next slides are just a few examples of the many entries. Light Sanctuary is by Decker Yeadon, a New York-based architecture firm. It is a sinuous composition of thin film organic photovoltaic material similar to that manufactured by the company Konarka. By encasing the solar film in a continuous ribbon set up six meters from the ground, they create a fantastic space that culminates in a ramp to a viewing platform from which visitors can see the entire sculpture from within it set against the backdrop of the Dubai skyline. It would power about 500 homes. The Windstock team, led by Atelier DNA in New York City, arrived at a solution to harvesting the power of wind that had never before been considered. They were inspired by their observation of nature, especially the way that a field of wheat or tall grass blades wave in the wind. And rather, relying, rather than relying on a rotor with blades attached, they conceived of a set of stalks that would move under the power of the breeze coming from any direction. The energy conversion takes place in piezoelectric generators along the stalk and a torque generator at the base. The windstock design, as shown here, would power about 2,000 homes. 
Another innovative solution for solar power came from the PV Dust Project from an interdisciplinary team in London led by George Legend and Emmanuel Mattatini. By utilizing a new solar product called Svelar by the Kiyosimi Corporation, the team conceived of a three-dimensional array of spherical solar receptors that increases the incident surface area of the installation. The result is that the design requires 57% of the land area per kilowatt capacity output when compared to an array of flat, non-tracking photovoltaic panels, while maintaining the use of the ground for other purposes such as farming or recreation, or in this case, enjoying the beauty of the artwork. It could power, as shown, about 5,000 homes. So based on the success and the global interest in the project, we will be holding similar competitions along with community outreach and educational programs as we continue to pursue the actualization of the concept designs towards construction. So we are very pleased to announce that for 2012, we have partnered with New York City Department of Parks and Recreation for the next competition to be held at Fresh Kills Park, which is the former Fresh Kills landfill in New York City, um, which once the reclamation is completed will be almost three times the size of Central Park. The 2012 competition will open officially for registration January 1st, submissions due July 1st, with a decision and award ceremony in October. And jurors include representatives from the U.S. Department of Energy, top international architecture firms, local stakeholders in New York City, leading figures in the art world, such as Eric Shiner, the director of the Andy Warhol Museum. Um, and we can envision a day when renewable energy generating artworks will add cultural and economic value to public spaces around the world, while giving us cause to feel good about our creative stewardship of the environment. And over time, these works of public art will pay back both their carbon footprint and their installation cost, making them the perfect investment in our future. As longtime residents of Pittsburgh and alumni of Carnegie Mellon University, we see a boundless potential to tap into all that Pittsburgh has to offer in terms of art, technology, and sustainable urban development. And as Eric Shiner kindly alluded to um, in his excellent talk, we are now talking with the Andy Warhol Museum to see how we can bring the land art generator home so that Pittsburgh too, in some part, can be powered by art. Thank you. Thank you.